I'm happy to be in a place where there's no snow right now because I think we've got at least a foot and a half. So thank you for not having any snow. Um, <laughs> so I've been a producer at WSAW in Wausau, Wisconsin for about four years now. Um, I love my job. Um, but producing was not always my first choice. I went to school at UWSP, um, and I thought I was going to be a French education teacher just because I took four years of French. And I thought, hey, why not? I'll teach. That lasted about a semester until I realized summers off sound exciting, but teaching wasn't my thing right away. So then I went into arts management for about two, three semesters and realized I didn't want to work for a nonprofit organization. And then I stumbled upon news when I got into a news uh, media production class. So I had to add an extra semester to college, but it was probably the best decision I've ever made. Um, you guys all have internships, right? You're required to. Please do them and do as many as your schedule will allow. I didn't do any internships when I was in college. They were not required. Uh, and I learned a lot of stuff that I know on the fly. And it, it worked out for me, but I do not recommend it. Does anybody have any questions about me as a producer? OK. So I titled this, we're going to be talking a lot about um, branding your newscast and then graphics. I know where a lot of people are afraid to use graphics because we're news. We want to see things. We want to hear emotional sound bites. We want to see really good news. But there is some help in using graphics. So. When you start your day, I know you guys have probably talked about this with other um, gray fellows, how you start your day as a producer. So you go to your meeting, um, you divvy up your stories for the day, and then you decide, OK, what other stories am I going to use? Am I using wire services? You know, I do 6 and 10, so the 6 o'clock is all local, all regional, because we come out of the CBS Evening News. So we have no national unless it's a huge, huge story. So I have to rely a lot on my affiliates and on our state wires. So once you pick your stories for the day, you have to figure out how you're going to showcase your video or showcase your stories. So that's where your brand comes in. So these, we're actually in the process of getting a brand new brand at my station because we got all new graphics and your local news and weather authority. What does that mean? Does anybody know? What, what do you think of your local news and weather authority? What does that make you think of? Right? You don't know. What could it mean? It's a very, very vague brand. So that's why we're in the process of getting a new one. I know you guys have Fox 8, local first. So that means, so it tells a viewer, OK, I'm going to get the local news first. That is what I'm expecting to see. Um, I'm expecting to see local breaking news. I'm expecting to see local news you can use at all times. Kentucky, KYT stands for Kentucky. So they're all talking about regional news or across the state. You've got KKTV, breaking news leader. So I expect to see breaking news whenever it happens at the top of my show at all times. So really, your brand is your promise to the viewer. What can they expect when they watch your newscast? What can they expect to get when they're watching? Oops. OK. There we go. So this, even though we are without a brand at the moment, we did a bunch of research with a company called AR&D. So they asked about 500 people in our area what they like about our newscasts, what they don't like about our newscasts, what they wish we'd focus more on, and they said weather. Now for the people who love news, which I know a couple of you do, weather as a lead seems like a really hard story, a really hard transition to make, but it's the one thing that is effect that affects everybody. So when you can lead weather, lead weather. Even if it's, unless it's like sunny and 75 or a normal New Orleans day, Lead weather when something else is happening. Use your weather people as experts for national stories, too. So that's kind of what we've been using. So this is an A block of my newscast on a day when we got about a foot of snow. Now, live from across north central Wisconsin, News Channel 786 starts. And these are our new graphics, which is fun. The next batch of light and moderate snow moving in north central Wisconsin. We also have some snowfall totals from earlier today. And we set a snowfall record for the last 24 hours. Our details coming up. And we have a network of reporters out giving you the latest on what they're seeing all across the area. Our winter storm team coverage starts right now. So this latest storm dropped a good amount of snow on the area. We thought for a second we were out of the woods, but that's not the case. No, it came back. I'm sure radar won't hit the thing that happened, but I think a lot of people get caught up. Both storms were back to back, so many locations could have close to a foot this of snow. This was in a day. 
By the way, we got this much snow. <laughs> so I'm going to scrub through this a little bit. Just over six. Top light are we have a lot of pink hat in Medford and not drawn. Well, we could have okay. So I'm just, you don't want to hear the whole forecast, but one mile in Shano and two and a half. So this is how we're using our meteorologist to drive to the rest of our team coverage tonight. Perfect. Now let's continue our team coverage out to Jeremy Taven. Now, Jeremy, visibility last hour improved a little bit. Explain to people how it doesn't need to be snowing, which it won't be later on, but we could still see visibility less than two, three miles. Yeah, right now, obviously, not a ton of wind necessarily as we're staying like her down the 400 block. Visibility is mentioned running another mile or two. However, later tonight, the snow will be done falling from the sky, and then the winds are going to pick up and start blowing and drifting the snow. Once again, as we go overnight tonight and for tomorrow for that matter, the visibility could drop under a mile in some of those open areas, which will make it again tough if you're traveling by road, especially. We will see where you're going. So we could have, again, low visibility because of the. I'm just going to skip through some of this. It's kind of pretty with the snow falling in the background. It's kind of beautiful. Easy for us to stay in here, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, if you're going to go out in the snow, shovel slippery stretch. Okay, so we go through our current road conditions. This is still the same newscast. This is still all weather. By downloading our WSAW weather app for Apple or Android. And now we have more team coverage. Now continue our team coverage over three East live East reporters, three different locations. Cloud plans in that area. Brendan, what's it like out there right now? They really hated me this day too, because they had to go well, report Jeff, live in the snow. Well, Jeff, the plows have been out since earlier this afternoon, trying to make sure that those roadways are clear for that homeward commute, but they still have not had any chance to take a break with the uh, constant snow that's been falling tonight. Earlier today, I spoke with Street Superintendent Justin Bonac, who says that removing the snow today is extremely important for the city. We have some really cold weather coming behind it, which presents some problems. So we're gonna be following all afternoon and all of, probably <coughs> most of the evening and salting fairly heavily to try to get a lot of that snow off the road because. So you don't need to watch the whole newscast, but basically we have two more live reports from reporters. And then we have a segment about snow emergencies because in Wisconsin, when there's enough snow on the ground, we have a snow emergency, which means you can't park on the sides of the roads, you can't park in certain places because plows need to get through. So my A block was entirely weather on this huge day because weather was what everybody was talking about. So we've kind of used our brand, we're, we're moving towards a weather first brand. If weather is happening, we're gonna lead with it and we're gonna tell you all about it, we're gonna tell you why. Now, Oops. From across North Central and you don't need to watch that again. So when it comes to showcasing the stories in your newscast and your rundown, most people think of having great video. You know, if you have a fire, um, if you've got great flame video, if you've got compelling sound on a story that's going to really tug at someone's heartstrings. That's what most people think of when they think of showcasing. And you have breakouts and start sidebars when they're necessary. So if you have a medical story, what's a breakout? other information that you're not getting in a package. But what most people don't know is when to use graphics. Now, graphics can seem a little boring because it's just side bullets and little bullet points, but you can make them interesting. And a good time to use, breaking, or to use um, graphics is if you have breaking news that's happening right now. Maybe your reporter is on the way to the scene of some sort of accident. Well, you can't give them the pictures and the sound yet. So maybe you pull up a map, here's the location. Maybe there's a road closure. Okay, this is the sections of the roads. I saw in the Maroon Minute today, there is a bunch of um, streetcar locations that we're gonna close. Maybe you pull up a map and you show them, okay, these are the streetcar lo locations that are gonna be no more. You give people a visual without having to have video. Uh, maybe you have a lot of numbers to break down if you're doing something on taxes. Not everybody wants to read millions and millions of numbers, but if you show them on a screen, you can get away with not having to say them all the time. If you have recalls, showing recalled products, showing the numbers, the dates of expiration, you've got court cases if you don't have video, or if you're using the same wallpaper video over and over and over again, showing their mug shot is probably the easiest way. And then we recently had, if you guys have heard about Jamie Kloss, the girl from Barron County, so we had a bunch of press conferences. So we would take them live and we use graphics. So we'd update our supers live on air as they're talking so that we give them the most updated information. And then coming out of it, you do a bullet graphic and you give them the highlights. Because you know, they might not be there for the entire press conference, 
So if you can give them the highlights of what they might have missed, that's a good use of graphics. Does anybody have any questions? Feel free to stop me if you have any questions too. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we were talking about this with Albert earlier. So we use something called VizRT. So that's kind of the program that our graphics are through, through our rundowns. We use something called iNews. I know you guys use Inception. ENPS is also a big one, but we use iNews, so that's really compatible with what we're using. And with our new graphics, what we've learned is if an old graphic sneaks through, it shuts down our entire thing. So we have to be really careful about using our graphics correctly. So here is a couple examples of when to use graphics in a breaking news situation. Yes. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple things that we have that I don't have images of. So there's a side bullet graphic, and I can talk a little bit about that in a little bit. Okay. We begin with breaking news out of Weston tonight. There's a fire at KNS fuel injection on the 6,000 block of New Mississippi Oops, wrong Street. Way. News Channel 7's Brennan Scarborough. Yeah, that's so, I don't know if you guys can, coming out of preliminary rip da, 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 da. Uh, not much possible for according to the department to last about two hours. Okay, we had lots of breaking news that night. And we're also following an Amber Alert out for a one-year-old child in Milwaukee. Nolani Robinson was last seen today in Milwaukee. So using the graphic, we want to show her picture because we're trying to find her. Who also goes by Daria's Lewis or Daria's Taylor. He was last seen. And then showing the suspect his license plate, giving the viewer as much information as you can because we don't have any video of this. This is out of Milwaukee. This is in our area. Do not try to interact with them. Just call police right away. So that's an example of I don't have a lot of information. This is breaking news coming in. I don't have a ton of information, but I want the viewer to have as much information as I can. So we're using a graphic to highlight what's this guy's license plate number, what does he look like, who can they call, and what's the little girl we're looking for. So you give them the information that they need so that if they spot her, they know who to call when they, if they happen to see her. Okay, so sometimes you, a graphic isn't enough, sometimes you don't have any video, so you're stuck with an on-camera read. Now that can seem pretty boring, just sitting there watching an anchor talk. So there are graphic things that you can do to make an on-camera read more interesting. So this is our big video array wall. So that's where you saw those three live shots. We punched those into there. We can also punch graphics in. You could have video behind your anchor. Maybe you have some old file video that you've been using, but you don't want to take it full because fi file video to a viewer means I'm going to change the channel. It doesn't sound any anything new to me, especially because we have three screens. You know, you're looking at your TV, your computer, and your phone. You're not fully paying attention. So if you don't spark my interest right away, I'm going to change the channel. Um, you can also do graphics in a monitor, but be careful. Make sure you can actually read them from far away. We've had that problem before. Maps, like I said before, show the location of where things are happening, and a live shot. So let's see here. <laughs> Get past weather. So this is how we've used video in our array graphic. Mm -hmm. Yep. Supers are full screens. Anything, anything graphic-wise, we do it all through VizRT. And that's where um, you saw the mugshot graphics. We have to manually put in every single picture through that program as well. So if you have pictures of people, we can also use it for graphics for the monitor. So if we make, if this were a still image, we would make it through that VizRT program as well. So it's, you do a lot with it. So it would be good if you guys can get that. It would be good. Um, resource to have. But this is an example of using video behind an anchor to make a read a little bit more interesting. Did they? Okay. I know there's there's two big ones. There's either VizRT or Chiron. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of those, but those are the big graphic ones. Oops. No. Oh, now I have to go back. Goodness. Okay. The man accused of shooting and killing an Illinois deputy serving a warrant is due back in court next week. Floyd Brown is charged with So using that information and then going to a graphic? Jacob Keltner. 
He was shot Thursday at a hotel in Rockford. Brown did not enter a plea today. He will appear in court for his preliminary hearing on March 20th. A funeral will be held Wednesday for Deputy Kelner. So we used file video in the array because there's nothing new about the video. And then we pulled up a graphic of the person that we're looking for. So it makes the, the read a little bit interesting, even though you don't have any new flashy video to show the person. But it reminds the viewer, this is the incident we're talking about, and this is the person that we're talking about. So we also have a new fun toy at Channel 7. And you're going to see our old graphics. We have something called a touch board. So we got this big monitor that you can touch screen. So we got it specifically for elections when we had the spring elections last year um, to kind of file through instead of having to pull up a graphic all the time. But we've also used it for weather. So this is a good way you can be interactive while still using graphics and you don't have video to use. So let me find where that is in here. And we're still trying to find ways to use this. We specifically got it for our elections, but, oh, excuse you. Well, New Channel 7's Holly right. Chilton joins us from our touch board to give us a breakdown. Holly? Heather, the race for Wisconsin governor is currently a dead heat, according to the latest Marquette Law School poll. Incumbent Republican Governor Scott Walker is seeking a third term, faces state superintendent Democrat Tony Evers. Now, there are also four other candidates on the ballot from other parties. In the U.S. Senate race, it's the first time that Wisconsin has both major party candidates for Senate who are women. Incumbent Democrat Tammy Baldwin is facing Republican challenger Leah Buchner. In the Attorney General's race, incumbent Republican Brad Schimmel hopes to fend off Democratic hopeful Josh Call and the, in the Constitution Party's Terry Larson. In the race for state treasurer, it's going to be Democrat Sarah Godlewski, Republican Travis Hartwig, and Andrew Zulke of the Constitution Party all vying for your vote. Now, Wisconsin is also electing a new slate of congressmen. In the 7th District, incumbent Republican Sean Duffy faces Democrat Margaret Ingebrigtsen and Independent Ken Dreesen. In the 3rd District, incumbent Ron Kind is making a bid for his 12th term in Congress. Republican. Oop. First. So, Ashley, did you guys use all the, the boxes with the names? Yes. Faces? So, we used our VizRT graphics and we punched them into the touch board. Okay. So, what else? This was like the first night that we actually used it. What else you can do with it is you can draw on it, you can write numbers. We've also used it. We had flooding coverage last year, so we wanted to show flooding all across the state. So, we showed a state map. And we had little traffic cones, and our, our uh, anchor would click on it. You'd show a picture, and you can also play video through it as well. So this is kind of a fun tool. We um, are one of the first stations at Gray to actually have one of these. So we've been the guinea pig to make sure it works. We've had some bumps, which is what happens when you're the guinea pig. But we're, we're trying to find ways to actually make this work. So I don't know if this is something that you guys would use. What do you think? Anybody? I would use for weather, like either yeah. way. So it's funny, like so. Yeah, I think weather could be a good place to use that. You can pull up your seven day forecast. Maybe you've got changes coming in. You can draw on it. Also, sports is always nice because people want to draw, like, you know, the, what positioning, mm -hmm. where you with yeah. it. You can but use yeah. it for instant replay. Yeah. Anybody else have any ideas? Yeah. Um, so we just have, like, SBA and like, the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this would have been really helpful because you could have put up pictures of who. You can just kind of file through them. Yeah, elections was the real main reason we got this because in our governor's race, there were more candidates than this actually on the ballot. Originally, we had about 16 people running to beat our Republican governor on the Democratic side, and then we had three other Republicans trying to get that seat. So we had a lot of candidates to go through. So this is a good way to file through. Actually, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, there's a, we have a keyboard and a computer hooked up to it. We can make all our graphics. We use something called Gray Connect, which is kind of our interface to get content from our other Gray stations. Um, but we also punch all of our stuff in here. We've also used it for like weather photos. So when we got a lot of snow, as we do in Wisconsin, 
um, and people take fun pictures with their kids, we'll file through and do something fun at the end of the night. So this is a good, I like using that for um, your SGA thing if you had a lot of candidates. It's easy than pulling up graphic after graphic after graphic because you can only do so many on another graphic. Anybody else have any ideas of how you might use something like this? Yeah, go ahead. Having guests and like do some presentation with it would be also like, I mean, I don't know if the news it have a room for it, mm -hmm. but like sometimes you, you want a news from like expert itself and mm -hmm. they, they, you can, you, they can let them do like presentation while, you know, being interacted with it. Yeah. Without like practicing with the, you know, technical director, it's going to be hard, but with this, like, it should be easier for it. Yeah, and with this, we it took a lot of practice with our TDs. What we can actually do too is this whole board, we can pull that full and they can still swipe through as you're using it, but it's a full screen graphic too. So you can kind of use it in multiple ways. Uh, it was definitely something our anchors had to learn how to use because it's a little finicky. You don't actually have to touch it. You just have to go near it because it senses heat. So we had on air, I think two weeks ago, one of our investigative reporters was trying to show something and she pinched it weird and it just went huge on air, live on TV and she's trying to fix it. So we just had to take video as fast as possible because she's trying to talk and doing this. It was kind of a fun little limbo thing. Once we pulled the video, I'm the only one who gets to see that because I'm in the back with the video behind me, but watching her try to do that. So it's been a, it's been a process that we're still trying to figure that out for um, her. So do we have any questions about graphics, using them correctly? About what ways, does anybody from the Maroon Minute in here how could you guys have used graphics, I think, more in your newscast? What do you guys think? Using the stories you had today, how would you have used graphics more? If you had more, I know that in college sometimes you don't have all the resources that a news station does, but big picture dream, what, do we, what would you want to use? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We have, um, we'll run packages from our, our gray affiliates in other parts of Wisconsin and they have phone graphics. And our news director has really made it clear that if they have a phone graphic that's their look, we need to make a new one and edit it over it because we want it to always be our look. We don't want to have other graphics. So that makes sense that you wouldn't want to use something like that. You could, we've done with like Google Maps before. I think you have to check the licensing with that, but you could build one off of that in Photoshop or even Paint too, and you can kind of draw and color on it. That could be a way around that issue. Anybody else? Yeah. I mean, what's a common mistake you do with when you're using graphics? Like, is there like any point where you shouldn't use graphic or is it like? I mean, if you've got great compelling video, I would do that over using graphics any day. Graphics are a good place too if you have a lot of um, information that you want to get out there. When there, because if a viewer is watching on video and you have a bunch of stats or you have a bunch of information, they're tuning out because they're watching the video. So if you're trying to get across statistics or something like that, you can, you know, edit words over VO or you can use a graphic as like a breakout or something like that. Um, I think if you've got really compelling video and you, it's just into your newsroom, always, always, always use that. Anybody else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what we've done before, too, is if you have file video and you're talking about numbers, maybe you, I mean, this is a more advanced form of editing, but maybe you go in and you type out the words over your video in your package so you're pulling it up and not having to pull up a graphic as well. So you're kind of using numbers in a different way. But yeah, that's really helpful. Anybody else? Anybody have general questions? Because the one mistake I make when I do graphics is if you have a spelling error, but you also don't want too much on a graphic. Because if you have a ton of words, they're going to tune it out. They don't want to read, they want to hear you talking. So generally the rule, three to five words for like a super or per bullet point. Bullet point. These do not have to be full complete sentences. These are the, the hits, runs, errors. These are the um, points for the day. Um, 
you do not need, um, you can shorten numbers. So if we do like 12 million, you do not have to write all those zeros. You just do 12 M. So you make life a little easier for everybody. But you want to make sure you don't do graphics overload with too many words. And you don't want to take away from the hard work you've spent hours on by accidentally making mistakes. This is very common whether you get into a small market like mine, which is 136, all the way up to number one. Everybody makes mistakes. We are human. Um, but you don't want to take away, because this is funny, but this is probably a really important story. But all I'm thinking about is how silly that graphic looks. So that's why it's so important to double, triple check what you're working on. Spelling is on you as a producer. You are the last set of eyes before that, and it was cast goes to air. So you need to make sure that those graphics are spelled correctly, and you need to make sure that there's no punctuation errors. I mean, we've all seen the silly news fails of people accidentally putting swear words on L when they don't mean it. I've had spell check change Wausau to sausage, because apparently that's what it thinks Wausau is. So you really have to be careful. So that's where um, your anchors come in. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, do you guys do like the big parcel before, like the action short? Nope. Nope. We'd, unless we're trying a new camera shot or trying something new, like with our touch board, we usually do not have rehearsals and run throughs before because we are working up to the minute. Our anchors have to be out to set at least 10 minutes before. That usually doesn't happen because we're running, running, running. So we don't, you get one shot. So that's why it's really important. That's where your anchors come in or your reporters. You know, If you're really busy working on breaking news and you don't have time to check through all those graphics, ask somebody else. Don't just assume that you've got it right. So I always have one person, sometimes two, check through all of my graphics before I go out to, my, out to the booth. So we usually have the anchors who do that or my executive producer will check all graphics because I've made mistakes and we will get phone calls. And you would be surprised the number of phone calls they get for a silly, silly, tiny little spelling mistake. We get inundated and we get emails and it takes away from your credibility as a news station. That's where the fake news stuff will come through. We get a lot of people who will yell at us and say we're fake news because we spelled something wrong. So check your spelling. <laughs> and also don't forget about your closed captioning. I know you guys don't have captioning here, but when you're, you're in your scripts, you want to make sure everything is spelled correctly. Because for the people who really need it, they're going to call you when captioning is not up. So we have we've had a hard time with sports sometimes, not always putting all their captioning in, and weather. You have to put some sort of summary for people who really, really need closed captioning. The hard part about it is when you get into breaking news. Story just came in. You don't have a lot of information. If you have the opportunity, maybe you have a web story up, because nine times out of 10, you should be digital first. You should be pushing everything to the web right away. So you just plop the web story in there so that closed captioning has something to read. Um, but you need to give them something. You just can't keep it blank. You just can't keep it. Reporter talks about big story. That doesn't help the people who need closed captioning. Anybody have any questions? So in that case, you just put like the detail on your website on the closed captioning? Mm -hmm. Yep, so we've like written up the web story with all the tiny little details that we have. If it's very little information, we just throw it in a script. So at least on air, they have something to read for the people who really need closed captioning. Any questions? Apparently, I did not bring enough slides for this. So does anybody have any questions in general about graphics, about producing? What do we got? Um, we are actually in the process of hire, making a bunch of new hires because we, Hi. yes, <laughs> we have, um, usually at our station it's kind of a starter station, so we get a lot of people right out of college, like you, um, who want to get that first break into the business. So we actually have, we're looking for three more reporters, a morning weather person, uh, a producer, and a sports person right now. So we're having a big mass exodus of people. We're trying to get them hired as soon as possible. Um, night side, so I work the 6 and 10 o'clock newscasts. I produce two shows a day. Um, we have a 9 o'clock producer. We have our EP. We have me. That's our producing staff at night. And then we have our two main anchors on our CBS station, which is what we do, one anchor for a Fox station. We have one weather person at night and one sports person at night. 
So we're, we have a lot of people wearing a lot of hats because we don't have a ton of people. Um, we usually, I will edit my entire show. I will write it. Um, we don't do, Promotions does all of our uh, teases and uh, promos on air. Really? Yep. We, yeah, so we have a promotions department who does that, which is nice. So you edit the videos? Yep, I edit. So you write a video yep. and then you edit the video. Yep. And then other reporters MMJs? Yep, most of them are MMJs. We have two full staff photogs, um, and nine times out of ten, a reporter will not get one of them. They usually are doing. Yep, for, well, not always. With live shots, we still have MMJs. So they, we encourage them, because you don't want just a static live shot where you're just standing there. You want to have a little bit of movement. So we encourage them, especially in a breaking news situation, hold on, I'm going to get behind the camera, and I'm going to show you what's happening. So you're telling the viewer why you're stepping out of the frame. And then there, while they're talking, zooming in on what's happening with the fire or something like that. So we really have um, people who wear a lot of hats. Generally, our photogs are getting more vote shots for us. They're getting us more content because we've got a staff of about six or seven reporters, I think. And two of them are strictly morning show reporters. At night, I have one reporter for my 10 o'clock newscast, and the rest is all on us and on our affiliates. So what kind of stuff is big news in your market? Um, other than snow. Other than snow, uh, the Green Bay Packers. Everybody in Wisconsin loves the Green Bay Packers, except for the VU Vikings fans like myself, who have managed to make it into Wisconsin. Um, anytime, we re recently did research, so the top three things that people care about in our area are weather, the Green Bay Packers, and local feature stories, which I thought was really interesting. People don't care about hard news as much as I thought they did. So that's a new, that's why we're looking for a new brand, that's why we're changing the way we're doing things. So if we have breaking Packers news, that is going in the A block. So our sports people, that yeah. Ashley told y'all earlier, and it might have just gone over your heads, is that she talked about the station doing the search. Oh yeah. And the name of the company is A R and D. That's Audience Research and Development. That company and Frank Maggot, y'all may have heard about in intro class, but just that's a company you should be, you should know the name because they're two of the biggest consulting companies in the country in our business. A R and D. Mm -hmm. you mentioned that. It's interesting. I think your graphics in your, your newscast look really good. Thank you. Which is a point to make about market size. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can go to a bigger market and the pay's not going to be any better and the quality of the newscast isn't any better. And so it's something to really pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty good looking newscast. Yeah, our, something our old boss told us is we're small market news with big market dreams. So even though we're a small market, we're still going to conduct ourselves as a big market would. We're still going to chase the stories just as hard. Just because your market 136, which is low on the totem pole, doesn't mean we have to slack off. Sometimes we have to do even more work to compensate for the people that we don't have. Um, I was in Green Bay, which is a market 60, I believe. And they, they told me none of their producers do more than one show, which is completely foreign to me because I do too. Um, they have an editor for every single show, which is completely foreign to me. So, doesn't matter where you go market-wise. Um, How much does so, the show change between your six and your ten? We used to repeat a lot. Now we are not allowed to repeat anything unless there is an update. There is no repetition. So, uh, well, Professor Collins is feeling a lot of pain for you having to show. Yeah. Which, what the one nice thing about it is with the 6 o'clock since we come out of the CBS Evening News, no national for me at all. So it's local, regional. I rely a lot on our affiliates and what's going on statewide. So at 10 o'clock, there's been more new national news that I can use that I didn't get to use earlier. Um, but that is a new change for me. My news, usually I would stack my show. I get in at about 2 o'clock. Our meeting lasts about 20 minutes. I usually have my show stacked by 3. It's been pushing 3.30, 4 o'clock now just because I have to wait for news to happen because it's already been, we have a 4 o'clock newscast, we have a 5 o'clock newscast, so anything they've done, unless there's an update, I do not get to touch it. So no repetition, new now, next is what they keep pushing for us. Do you have a new news director? Like where is that 
Um, she's from our Gray affiliate in Green Bay. She's been here for about a year and a half now. So she kind of ushered in all of this research and is pushing us because we're neck and neck with our competitor who is a number one. We're very close number two. So we're trying to push that. Yes, Will. You just said you have a four, five, and six. How does that work? So we, so they're half hour shows. So our four o'clock news is on our Fox station and then we have the five to 5.30 and then I do six to 6.30. So ours are only a half hour long. The morning show does straight news from 4.30 to seven o'clock and there's two producers for that. They are the exception to the repetition rule just because that's a lot of news with no repetition. But generally, if they run a package in one half hour of the show, they have to just use a VO or a VOSAT because that's a lot of news to fill. Anybody else? Yeah. Oh, I wish we had control over those. Um, so that's our operations department. So with like weather alerts, we have no control over when that pops up. And usually our newscast will squish so that you don't get anything cut off. But now we have this fun thing where it goes at the top of your screen. And some people with four by three TVs can't see it all. So we get phone calls about that. Um, we have a ticker for school closing, so that will randomly pop up. And then during sports, we run one with constant scores. We are usually not the one filling that in. That's our operations department. I'm not a huge fan of them, but I know they work because with severe weather, people don't want to just hear it. They want to see constantly what's closing. Uh, they want to see constantly uh, weather alerts, weather advisories. So it's another tool to really hit home what's happening. Oh yeah, I could pull that up. It says your connection is not private, so I don't know what's going on here. Um, so we have a web department, but everybody is responsible for, for putting up web stories and for being on social media. So I have the responsibility to do that because our web person only works until about five o'clock in the afternoon and then it's on us to get news up. So we have our nine o'clock producer is also kind of our digital content producer, but when she's gone, it's on the producer to be able to write a web story and writing a web story is very different than writing a newscast story. Um, and then everybody has their own social feeds, but we're all responsible for our, our own and the station's social feeds. So we abide by digital first. If we have breaking news, we put it on the web, we push it out, we put it on Facebook, then we put it on air. Okay, so why I'm seeing it here, but I'm not seeing it there. I don't know. Let me get out of this. Maybe that's it. Uh-huh. It comes up now. There we go. The um, research people said that we. The weather. Yep. <laughs> yeah, really. Flip those numbers. Flip those numbers, and that's what it's like here. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have a lot of people. We had uh, one of our reporters is from Georgia. She'd never been to the Midwest before, and her first winter was a real shell shock. Poor little thing. And she decided to do the polar plunge, which is where we jump into a frozen lake in the middle of January. And I swear she turned into an icicle, and she's not done it since. Um. <laughs> so you guys, just so you know, her news director, Sarah Gray, yes. graduated in 2012. She's one of the youngest news directors in Gray. And she was... Uh, produced, she was at her, her, her old station at WBAY for five years. She worked up from being a weekend producer part-time to the 10 o'clock producer to the executive producer in a very short amount of time and then she got news director job. So it's really easy with producers to move up quickly if you work hard and you're good at your job. Producers are something that everybody needs because everybody wants to be on air. There's not a lot of people who want to work in news and don't want to be the face of it. So you are very marketable if you are a producer and you do really well at your job. And our executive producer has been in the business for... So yep. 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 And I can tell you the news director position takes more 
Yep. You know, the position. So that's oh, yeah. the thing. You start getting into management, and then a general manager would be the next step. That's when yep. you start. And then you, you get into corporate, so you could be like VP of news operations if you really wanted to go big. That's kind of the dream. Um, my aspirations, I want to be an executive producer at another station coming up soon. Uh, our EP has been at our station for nine years. She's done everything from report, anchor. She, was, uh, she produces the 5 o'clock newscast, and she executive produces. We do a lot of people have multiple jobs. So she's done about everything. I know a lot of our um, reporters were producers at first, so having that producing skill under your belt, even if you don't want to be a producer, is a really good skill to have. It really hones in on your writing skills, even if you want to be a reporter, because some of our reporters are part-time producers as well. We have a lot of people doing a lot of jobs. Yes? What producers do when you don't, your show, show is, after your show is done? Do um, well, I <laughs> after the six is done, I work on the 10. Um, once the 10's done, we, I'll make sure that web is up to date. We do a handoff note to the morning crew. So we say, okay, these are all the news stories that happened today. These are the, all the news stories that we know are going to happen tomorrow that you're going to want to be aware of. So we're in constant communication with the other day part so that they know what's going on. Um, I do a lot with like our directors. When I thought I was going to be a technical media producer when I was in college, I thought I was going to be the one with the TriCaster, and then I found producing and fell in love with that. So we do a lot of double duty on my station. Yeah. But yeah, then I just go to sleep. I just fall on the floor after a long day. I always say if there's really bad weather, I'm just going to roll a cot out from underneath my desk and just sleep there at that point. Especially when there's elections, we come in at 1 and we leave at 1 a.m. Nope. You're in constant adrenaline. <laughs> yeah, I usually don't go to bed until one or two o'clock in the morning by the time I get home, just because you're so amped up by the time you get done. It's really hard, but that's then I don't have to get up right away because I don't work until two o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah, we. I had a resume reel, which was from when I was in college, and it was reporting because that's what we did in college. So I have really terrible stand-ups that I'm sure you could find. I think I made them private on YouTube, so you might not be able to find them, which is fine with me because they're really terrible. Um, and I had we had resume writing classes, so your resume is really important. I put up high that I was in student television, and that I did this, this, and this with it. So I was a producer for. A year and a half, I was a general member, so I would do anchoring. That's also terrible. Please don't go look for it. Um, <laughs> I was not born to be on air. I was, I'm not the on-air talent type. Um, but then I happened to do a job shadow with my current station. So me and our other producer went to WSAW for their morning show. So we got there at 2 o'clock in the morning. We sat in on their newscast. We kind of told them what we wanted to do. And we left at 7 o'clock in the morning and had to go to class at 8. Um, but you make it work to get your foot in the door because when I graduated two months later, one of their anchors contacted me and said, hey, we have a producer opening. Why don't you apply? Because she remembered me. So getting your foot in the door, that's why those internships are so important. They tell you if you, you learn if producing or if news is what you want to do because being in that environment can be a little scary. But it also gives you contacts for people. I mean, you never know when they're going to have a job opening. They'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember when, you know, when Will came to my station and was working. You know, he came, we woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning and came to my station. I know he wants to be a producer. I'll give him a call and see if he's looking. Just having those connections, so meeting with people all the time is really important to getting your foot in the door, having a good resume, having a good resume tape. Any questions about? resume building or internships? Does anybody here, uh, do you all have internships already? I know some of you are sophomores, some of you are seniors. Yes, that's good. <laughs> so show, 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 how many of you, I'm curious too, how many of you have interned at a TV station? Not, not a lot, maybe they've had a couple around. I count. Four. Wow. 
So do a lot of you not want to be in news? Maybe you're more film-based? Yes? Yeah? I, hear some, I see some heads nodding. Um, so a lot of the skills you learn in news you can take to film. You know, it's the same, con you know, you have to learn how to shoot, you have to learn how to write your scripts well, even if it's for a uh, feature film or for a small market newscast, honing in on those writing skills is really important. You use graphics in movies. That's something that's important to do. So having those skills goes hand in hand. I thought I was going to be a documentary filmmaker. I still want to be one someday. So having that skill set is still really, really important, even if producing or being in news isn't your end goal. Maybe it's a means to get to something else. But these skills that you get here are really, really important. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I just was always interested in, I, I'd watched a lot of documentaries when I was growing up, and we had a good film class, we had a lot of film classes. At my school, our, uh, we didn't have a journalism major. You majored in mass communication with an emphasis in either journalism, film, or media production. So I was a communications major with a media production emphasis. So that's kind of how I transitioned out of film. I took a lot of like film classes. We had a French film class, and we had one class where my professor was obsessed with Alfred Hitchcock. So we watched six or seven of those movies. We'd have two hour long classes where all we do was watch movies. It was the best day ever. Um, so that's kind of how I got into a little bit of that. I know you were interested in documentary filmmaking. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, so you are you asking how to like showcase what you did at your internship yeah well you, writing is basically everything that we do as a producer is revolved around writing so that's a good thing to put up high you can you know you can say I went to an internship at this station and I was in charge of writing these scripts for this newscast I was in charge of you know making sure that the lead was actually what's happening right now with the new, the new thing. So writing is a huge skill to have as a producer. So I think if you put that up really high in your resume, that'll show that you have that producing skill. Did you, what else did you do at your internship besides writing scripts? You did some reporting too? Okay, so you, can, you, you have the shooting skills so you know how to shoot video. You probably know how to make graphics then, right? So that's a producer skill. Um, you do, did you do any live shots? That's a producer skill the other way around. So we have to coordinate live shots and we have to talk to our crews. So you, there's, there's a way to spin it a little bit. Um, you have the writing skills, you have the shooting skills, you have the time management skills. That's something that's important for a producer to have. Yeah. That probably wouldn't hurt. If I know a lot of people have websites. I know one of our uh, seven our investigative reporter had a instead of having a resume, he had a whole website that he made for himself. So he had newscasts that he'd anchored, or he had reports that he did. So you could do something similar to that, and then say these are the scripts that I've written. You know, these were the shows that I produced. These are the reports that I did. Really showing off your skill set. So that might be a way to do that. Because with the resume, you want to give the overview. You don't want to go into too much detail. So you could link to maybe when you send in resumes, you can also say, I have a website. Here's a look at all of my work if you want to take a look at it. So attach that with your resume, maybe. That makes sense. Because a website's a good place to show all that off. And you can get a little fancy with it. It shows your creativity, too, which is something a producer needs to have. Oh, so here's our website. <laughs> I knew we pulled this up for a reason. Um, our, the AR&D people said that we created a monster because our website was so good that people just went to that first and then they didn't watch our newscasts. <laughs> I know, right? Is it good, though? Yeah, I think our website's pretty I mean, we, this is another place where spelling counts because people will call you. If you spell a word wrong, they will call you because it gets, you know, it's your credibility. If they think you're in news, you know how to spell everything absolutely correctly. So with our website we've done let's get the information out there right away and then with our newscast you add context to it 
you know, how does this affect a national story? How does it affect our viewers? So that's where your newscast comes in handy, where your website is. Here's the facts right now. And writing a script for online is very different than writing a script for on air. Um, everything's in past tense. You, but when you write um, a newscast story, you want present tests, new, now, next, what's happening right now. This is happening, not this was happening. Turn that off. Any other questions? Yes. How much do you control the ad that shows up on your website? Oh, yeah, those are annoying. Uh, that's our sales department who controls those. Um, so we had, it was really unfortunate one day, we had a drowning story and the ad at the bottom was for the polar plunge. And unfortunately, we have no control over that, but we had to call them and, and tell them to switch that up if they really could. We also have big banner ads that go on the sides too. But we unfortunately do not have as much control over the ads as we want. So we also have little things. Let's see if they pop up down here. Oh, where are they? If you accidentally scroll over this for too long, that happens. So if you want coupons for advanced auto parts. <laughs> so that's our sales department that kind of deals with all of that. So that's a whole different side of news. You have a sales department who's selling your ad space on your websites and on your newscasts. Anybody else have any other questions? Thank you. <laughs> yep, I have business cards up here. Thank you for being so nice to me. I'm not used to speaking in front of huge crowds. Usually I can't see them when I'm talking to them. So. <laughs>